I have made a full-time living reselling on eBay for the last three years, and I believe that the average individual can do so, but there are a ton of mistakes that beginners make that if you can avoid, you can get right to making money, and I want to go over those in this video. The first mistake that beginning eBay resellers make is they overbuy. Going to thrift stores and yard sales and estate sales, going to flea markets, and sourcing, treasure hunting, Actually looking for these items is the funnest part of the job, but you don't actually make any money until you actually list and sell these items. Too many people get caught up in the emotions and the, the thrill of the hunt of treasure hunting that they forget to actually list their items. And yeah, they list the really cool ones. They list the ones that they like the most, but usually you end up developing what we call in this industry a death pile of just a ton of items that you have bought to sell on eBay but you never actually list them on eBay. But that's not the only way to overbuy. Another way that a lot of beginning eBay resellers fall victim, victim to is they see other YouTubers showing videos of all of the money that they make selling CDs and records. There are a lot of people out there that make a full-time living selling CDs and records alone. It's a profitable niche, but not all CDs are profitable. The majority of them are not but there are a select few. There's a quite a bit of CDs and records that sell for good money, but you have to understand which records and CDs actually are selling. A lot of people, they just go to the bins or they go to yard sales and they just buy huge lots of CDs because they're free or close to free. They come home, they waste all their time listing items that don't have a demand. A lot of these times, these CDs have hundreds and hundreds enlisted but only really three sales in the last 90 days, meaning that your CD is never going to sell for an actual profit. But there are thousands of CDs selling on eBay every single week for 20, 50, 80, and hundreds of dollars. You just have to go find those CDs. So don't fall into the trap of, oh, all CDs and all records sell well because they're vintage or even because they're a, a big a big star or awesome band. A lot of times those CDs were produced in the hundreds of millions, even billions of CDs. So those aren't worth anything, even though it's an awesome title and an awesome name. Another part of this is even really high demand, fast sell through rate brands. For example, I sell a lot of Dyson vacuums. And so when people hear me talk about selling Dyson vacuums, they think, oh, I'm just going to buy every Dyson vacuum at a reasonable price. That's not the case. There are a ton of models within Dyson that do not sell well. There are a ton of items within that brand that don't sell at all. You can't give them away. You can probably give them away for $8 shipped, but then you're gonna lose money on fees and shipping. So you have to identify even items within a brand that sell well. Like Titleist, for example, there are a ton of Titleist golf clubs and hats that sell extremely well. But if you find a Titleist DCI 4-iron from 2007, not going to sell well on, on its own at all. At all. There's probably like 80 of those listed and maybe two sold. If you buy and resell that, you are not going to sell it for a profit and you are not going to sell it this year. No chance. So even though Titleist and Dyson, and even though there are extremely fast selling, highly profitable CDs, even though all these things are out there, you have to learn how to understand what items are in demand, how quickly they sell, and how much profit you're going to make from those items. And this is called sell through rate. You're gonna hear about this a lot on my channel if you stick around, so I will refrain from talking about that in this video, but just understand, watch a ton of videos in this space and learn how to understand sells, how to understand the frequency and the sell through rate of them and understand the quality of these items and you're going to do just fine. Another reason why the average eBay reseller overbuys is because one of the most popular models here on YouTube and Reddit and Facebook for reselling is listing the exact amount of items every single day in your business no matter what when I believe that you should really focus on how many items you're selling per day, not how many you're listing. The logic is there. If I am selling five items every day with 1,000 items, if I go up to 2,000 items, I will sell 10 a day, right? That's how the math works out. Unfortunately, when you are listing, let's say 10 per day, and they are a pretty good quality of item, and then one day you just decide, I'm going to double that to 20, 
what you're going to do is you're going to sacrifice the quality of those items just to get to 20. You were listing items that had an average sell through rate of let's say 50% and you are able to consistently find 70 items per week that have around a 50% sell through. But now you're going to just all of a sudden start listing 20. What ends up happening is you start buying items that have a 10%, 20%, and 30% sell through. So what happens is you list all of these items every single day. You're listing 20 over and over and over again. You get to that 2000, but now instead of selling 10 items per day, you're still only selling six, sometimes seven, because the quality of that inventory went down drastically. Don't fall in love with listing the exact same amount of items every single day or trying to get to a certain store size, like 100 items, 3,000 items, 10,000 items. What you want to do is focus on how many items and how much money you're actually selling per day. The best way to do this is instead of focusing on how many items to list, you want to focus on how fast each individual item will sell. If you just buy items that have a 100% sell through rate and you can only find four per week, it is much better to only list those four and then maybe a few of the others that you're finding that have above a 50% sell through rate. It's much better to do that and list only 15 to 20 per week than it is to list 15 or 20 per day when the sell through rate has gone down significantly because you're focusing on the number of listings instead of the number of sales. If you increase the sell through rate and you look for the demand in demand items, you will have a much smoother transition into this business. If you focus on the number of items in your store and the number of items you're listing per day, many of you will fail and you will quit doing this. And I want you guys to keep doing this because you can make more money than you ever have and spend more time with your family than you ever have. But you gotta do things differently than the people that are failing. You gotta be, you gotta be the best, right? I truly believe that if you focus on not overbuying and buying the right items, not focusing on store size, but focusing on money going to your bank account, you're going to see huge success. The next deadly mistake that beginning eBay resellers make is they focus more on the algorithm than they actually do on the customers. I alluded to that in the last clip. The reason why so many people list the exact same amount of items every single day is because they think that they are grooming the algorithm. They believe that if they stop listing the same amount of items per day, that they're going to see a dramatic drop in sales. And they typically do, be not because of the algorithm, but because you have less items for sale. Um, if you stop listing every single day, all of your good items will sell, all of your crappy items will remain in your store, and none of those will sell. But if you keep putting a good combination of good items and crappy items in your, sell, in your store, all of the good ones will continue to sell, all of the mediocre ones will continue to drip off and sell here and there, and all the crappy ones will just continue to mount and up and pile in your store until you put them on discount or blow them out completely. So that is just one aspect of people trying to serve the algorithm instead of serve the customer. If you wanna serve the customer in this instance, only list items that are in demand that customers are looking for, you'll have a much better time on eBay. A lot of people only do like seven or eight photos because they think that it is hacking the algorithm and that the algorithm is going to give them more views, thus leading to more sales. No. When you have more photos, you are serving the customer, which is the job of the algorithm. So you need to replace the word algorithm with customer, and that's what's truly going to help you in this eBay business. If you are only doing eight photos because you think the eBay algorithm is going to benefit you from that, you're gonna take like two good photos and then the other six, you're just gonna quickly snap and it's probably just gonna be like the same photo three times over six photos. That's not gonna help you sell anything. But if you have this mouse and you take this photo and this photo and this photo and a close up on the wheel and a close up on the model number and you take this bottom part off to show that there's no corrosion, those five photos are gonna be significantly better than just seven or eight photos because that's what the algorithm wants and you just snap a ton of the same similar photos. A lot of people only do returns because they think it is the algorithm giving them a push on their items, but really 
It's what the customer wants. Again, the algorithm is serving the customer, so they're going to show your items to more people if you have free returns, because that's what the customers have demanded. Customers show time and time and time over again. eBay studies all of the data, all every single second that you're on eBay, you are being tracked and studied for your behaviors, your transactions, and what you do on their site. And they can see when people click on a listing and then see that it has a no return policy and they click away and then go buy something with a return, with a free returns policy, they gather that information and they train the algorithm to only show items to those customers with returns. So again, if you want to have more sales on eBay, serve the customer. The customer is clearly showing that they need free returns. It doesn't mean that they're going to return the item. They just want the assurance that they can if anything goes wrong. And when you have free returns, it shows to them that you believe in your products and that you're doing a good job. Don't serve the algorithm, serve the customer. That's what the customer wants. Really just replace the word algorithm with customer and you're gonna do great. The third mistake that beginning eBay resellers make is they don't understand their numbers. Now I have a video, I think it's titled, if you make under $100,000 a year on eBay, watch this. I'm going to put that at the end screen, like right here, so you can click on it at the end of the video so you can understand your numbers more. But I'll briefly break them down for you here. If you don't understand your numbers, you're not actually going to be able to build a profitable business. Sometimes we think that we're making more money than we are, when in all reality, after fees and shipping and taxes and stuff, we're not making as much money as we can. Now also don't emotionally get triggered by that and think, yeah, after gas and fees and all that stuff, there's no money to be made on eBay. You can make so much money reselling on eBay, but you need to understand those numbers so you can actually see how much money you are making. You need to understand your cost of goods. Every time you go on out and you buy an item, you need to understand what you're paying for that item. And the best way to do that is to just average this out. So if you buy items all week, every week at thrift stores and yard sales, just find out what your average is on those items. It's going to average out to be maybe $2. Maybe it's gonna average out, sorry. <clears throat> maybe it's gonna average out to be $4, $10. Some people have really high cost of goods at like $30, but they make much more profit and higher sales price. But you need to understand what your cost of goods is. Then you're going to need to understand what your average sale price is, and then you can deduct the cost of goods from that average sales price. In my business, my average sales price is $40, okay? If my average cost of, cost of goods was $5, then I'm already at $35 profit, okay? You're also going to need to understand what your costs are. eBay fees are typically 15%, okay? It's like 13% or lower, but I would recommend promoting at about 2% or so. That's a, a topic for another video, but just let's imagine that your eBay fees are around 15%, okay? $40, 15% is $6. So now my $35 has gone down to 29. Then I'm also going to have to ship it. My average shipping cost is $7 across all my items. All my small ones go for around four or $5. I have some big ones that go for like 40 and some other ones that go for about 10 or 11, but my average is about $7.26. I actually know that because I'm on top of my numbers. So we'll say 7.25. So now my $29 <clears throat> goes down to $21.75. So I make $21.75 every sale. That's my average, okay? You're also going to have to factor in gas and overhead and things like that, but I have all that stuff optimized. I work from home, so technically you could count that. Technically you don't have to count it. Um, and then, you know, gas, I drive a Jetta that gets like 48 miles to the gallon and all of my sourcing is super local. So maybe we're looking at three cents or less per item. So that's negligible as well. But this, what I'm getting at is you need to understand at least your cost of goods. You need to understand your sales, your average sales price, and then you need to deduct your cost of goods, your shipping fees, and your eBay fees. After that, you'll actually know what you're making. And then as you're making decisions out in the field while you're sourcing, you can do these calculations in your head of, okay, this is how much it's gonna cost me and this is how much money I'm actually going to make from it. But too many people think, okay, I'm gonna buy this for $5 and I'm gonna sell it on eBay for $20 free shipping. Okay, let's do the math on that. It's $5, it's you sold for 20 bucks and it also sold for like 30 cents in taxes. Actually, it's going to be more than that. No, yeah, about 30 cents in taxes. Okay. So it sold for $20 and 30 cents. They're also going to charge you fees on the taxes and the shipping. Okay. But you didn't include shipping in this. So it's $20 and 30 cents 
times 15%, okay? So that's about $2.52 minus $5 that you bought it for. So we're already down $7.52. And then if it's kind of a bigger item, let's say it's just over a pound, but it's under two pounds, and it's going about 2,000 miles away to a different state, now you're looking at about $8 to ship it. So now you are at $7.50 plus eight, you're at $14.50. So you have made about $4.50 on this transaction. And then if you factor in your time and if you have a warehouse and if you have employees and all this different stuff, then you're really, really getting close to nothing on this. Five into 20 sounds awesome, but you're really making about three or $4 off of that. Is that worth it to you? Is it worth it to, if you times that by 1,000, is it worth it to you to spend $5,000 to make 3,000? It might be, and if it is, go for it. But you, you have to understand these numbers to do so. So if you find five something for $5 that sells for $20 plus shipping, now you're going to make a ton more money. But if you don't understand those numbers, you're never going to know that. So I, I know a lot of times I'll buy something for $70 because it sells for like $340 and I understand, oh, sweet, I'm going to more than double my money on that. But a lot of people will only buy things for $5 or less because they're too afraid of those bigger numbers. But once you understand the numbers, you realize, oh, okay, I only have to spend $70 to make 150. But if I spent $7 10 times and I only make $90, it feels better emotionally, but it doesn't make sense logically and mathematically. But if you understand these numbers, you're not gonna have these issues. The fourth mistake that eBay resellers make is they let their emotions get in the way of making more money. Principally, when you're just getting started and you see videos about returns and about scammers and about people saying, oh, you can't actually make money because of taxes and driving and all that stuff. First off, you delay getting started or you never start at all because you convince yourself it's not for you because of the fear and the anxiety and those negative emotions that come with seeing those videos or seeing those clips or hearing other people's negatives, negative experiences. Um, understand that this is a business and that you can make money and that there will be shortcomings. And if you pre-calculate those shortcomings, you don't have to be afraid of returns and scammers because you have already written them into your business plan. Let me be the, let me be the person to tell you that scams and returns are significantly less common than you would think watching social media. Reason number one is because we are emotional creatures. And so when we have a return or when we have a few returns, it feels much worse than it actually is. My return rate is about four and a half percent. Okay, so every 20 items I send out, I get one return. It's not bad, only one, okay? And usually it's returned in the exact same condition and I can just resell it, right? But what happens is if we get, if we send out, and this is an average, okay? So every once in a while I send out 17 items and I get two returns just off of those 17. And then if you aren't emotionally ready for that, it just feels like, oh, the world is falling and this sucks. Like, holy cow, returns are so high right now. Why is it like this? And it impedes you from just listing more items and selling more items and making more money. You just think about the returns and you start to make these conspiracy theories about how eBay is against you or how these seller, these buyers are scammers when really returns just happen and it's part of business, okay? But understand that 4% isn't that much at all, okay? If you sell $100,000, that means only $4,000 worth of that stuff is coming back to you. That means you made $96,000. Like don't let $4,000 that you can get back and resell anyway, don't let that $4,000 stop you from making $96,000, okay? 4% returns, that's it. My returns are a bit on the higher end because I do a lot of electronics, like VCR players and, and things like that. A lot of you guys are only gonna have ret a return rate between 0.5 and 2%. Don't let $2,000 stop you from making 98,000, okay? Also scammers, scammers are real. It happens every once in a while, but there are ways to avoid scammers. So the best way to avoid scammers is to not be a beginner. 
I know I'm talking to a lot of beginners right now, so let me teach you a very quick tip on how to avoid being scammed. If you have a ton of feedback, scammers don't reach out to you because they know that you're a seasoned seller and they're not going to waste their time because they know they can't, they can't convince you. The biggest scam on eBay is if I have this mouse for sale, this is actually a really nice mouse. It sells for like 60 or $70 in used condition. If I am a new eBay reseller and I put, this is my first item I put on eBay, I'm immediately, not immediately, but I'll get some messages from people saying, wow, I really love that mouse. Will you please email me so I can send you PayPal and uh, you can send it to me? No, say no, just say, no, yeah, go, just go ahead and buy it through eBay. And then they'll respond back and being like, well, I just, I actually, you know, I just, I don't have like a social security number, so I can't actually set up an eBay account, but I really want the mouse. So I'm willing to actually even pay you $10 more. I'll pay you $80 through Venmo if you just send me your number and we can get it taken care of. Don't do any of anything off of eBay or you will get scammed. And on top of that, eBay will ban your account. The way you avoid this is you just get a ton of feedback. The way that the feedback system works on eBay is when you buy something, people can leave feedback for you as a buyer. And then when you sell things, buyers can leave feedback for you as a seller. And they're both counted the same. There isn't buyer feedback and seller feedback. There's just feedback. So when I first started eBay, during the pandemic, I was home a lot and I really love basketball and I enjoy collecting basketball cards. So I bought about 700 individual basketball card listings. <laughs> and from those 700 purchases, I got 400 positive feedback. I didn't even know I was going to sell on eBay. I was just buying basketball cards off of eBay. Then one day I decided I was gonna sell on eBay. So I started listing my items and I already had 400 positive feedback and scammers never went for me because I already had a ton of feedback. I have noticed and people from my channel and other subscribers have told me that they stopped getting those, those scam offers at around 55, eight to 80, 75 feedback. So what I would do is I would just buy all your deodorant and your iPhone chargers and your plastic baggies that you use for lunch and your sandwiches. Just everything that you're currently buying right now on Amazon, just go buy all that stuff on eBay for a month and it's going to build your feedback and you're going to have less and less scammers like that. Now, I have sold tens of thousands of products on eBay and I still get people trying to scam me every so often. And trust me when I say it is every so often, like one in 750 transactions. Okay. So if I make, if I have $40 per sale, okay, $40 times 750, that's $30,000. One out of those 750 will scam me. So we'll minus 40 bucks. Don't let $40 stop you from making $29,960. Okay. Scams will happen every once in a while. My, the first scam that ever happened to me, I sent out a receiver, um, a ho I mean, a, not a receiver, a, a VCR player, okay? VCR player has these timing belts that make it spin so that way it can read the VHS, right? Someone bought this VHS from me, took that specialized timing belt out and then sent me back the VCR and it no longer worked. They scammed me, okay? I just reported it to eBay and they took care of it and that was over. And that happens once every 750 transactions on average. Don't emotionally let scammers and people telling you that this isn't worth it stop you from changing your life and starting this eBay business because you can make so much money from it. Another emotional thing that's going to affect you as a reseller and this never goes away is the inconsistency of sales. You can be ultra consistent and be the best business owner and just keep pumping out listings and finding quality items. And there's just gonna be peaks and valleys. You know, some days I, I do like $1,800 in a day. And then sometimes that 1800 day is followed by 260. And when I first started, I would be really excited about a $300 day. And then some, and then some days I would only sell one thing for 12 bucks. Some of you may sell eight things on a Monday and zero on a Wednesday. It just happens. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with eBay. There's nothing wrong with the economy. All of these three things can definitely affect your sales. But if you are just doing what you should be, you will have days that suck. Don't let those sucky days emotionally affect you to where you get less work done during that day or that week, 
or it gets you to start conspirizing against the eBay machine. And now you're typing into YouTube, eBay, why does eBay suck? Why eBay this? Why is eBay that? And now you're spending hours and hours and hours on YouTube listening to negativity instead of listening to some music or a, a financial or mindset podcast and getting 40 listings done. Now you've spent the majority of your day listening to other conspiracy theorists talk about how eBay sucks and guess who hurts from that? We do. If we waste our time emotionally trying to hop on Reddit or Facebook or YouTube and saying, my sales are slow. Is anyone else experiencing slow sales? Yeah, a lot of people are having slow sales because we are all on that roller coaster of awesome sales today, not as good sales a week from now. Awesome sales this month, lower sales this month. Awesome sales this week, lower sales this week. It's all part of owning a business. This is why the nine to five working for someone else is so popular because if you show up for work, you get $1,800 every two weeks. In this industry, sometimes you're gonna make $4,400 in two weeks. And then the next two weeks, you're only gonna make 1,100. But if you just keep grinding away, set yourself with a budget, do all the things that you should do as a productive, mature adult, this is going to be awesome, guys. It's going to be an amazing experience, but you just got to push away as much emotion as you can and build as much logic as you can. And don't push away your emotions completely. We are emotional creatures. It's really important to express emotions and, and let those emotions develop ourselves in our relationships. But when it comes to business, if you can just be a logical robot, do it. Especially in eBay, if you don't have employees, be a logical robot. Once you, once you start bringing on employees and stuff, that's when you need compassion and emotion. And sometimes dealing with customer service, you need the compassion and emotion. But when it comes to lo when it comes to business, the logic the more logical you are, the more money you'll make, the more emotional you are, the less money you'll make, unfortunately. All right, guys, before I hop off, I just wanted to give you guys the underlying thesis of this video, and that is that you can make so much money on eBay, but you have to avoid a few mistakes and you have to learn from the mistakes that you make. I want you guys to understand that this is a life hack. Reselling used and new items on eBay, the profit margins are incredible. The work-life balance, if you schedule this correctly, is incredible. The money that you make is incredible, but there are hurdles that you have to overcome. There are decisions that you have to make, and there are sacrifices that you have to make. And if you do these things over time, your life will change and you will make more money than you ever have and you will spend more time with your family than you ever have and your bank account will be the biggest it's ever been. But please understand that there are obstacles in your way and you don't you don't have to be negative about it, okay? These four, these four things are an issue that a lot of people run into. Please just skip over them. Please use this video to just understand those and you're going to make mistakes along the way, but you can avoid these four for a majority of it, and you can just continue to plug along and make more money. But please understand that this is an awesome opportunity. Reselling on eBay is amazing. There are obstacles in front of us, but this, this isn't a negative video. I hope it did not come across negative whatsoever. Just avoid these four common mistakes, and you can really start making incredible money and really, really enjoying an awesome life. So I'll see you guys next time.